Peterson Automotive Museum. It is in LA, off Wilshire Boulevard, not far from the La Brea Tar Pits. If you haven't watched that video, I want to encourage you to go back and do that. But today, we're going to Peterson Automotive Museum. It's a great place, it's a fun place, and if you're in LA, make it one of your stops. The reason we're going to Peterson today with you is to talk about an example of design. But first, a little bit about Robert Pete Peterson. He was an American publisher who founded the Peterson Automotive Museum in 1994. Which means they are celebrating their 30th year anniversary this year. The Peterson Automotive Museum is one of the world's largest collections. They have some amazing cars on display, several hundred of them. Well, it's not only cars. They have, they have motorcycles, all kinds of crazy vehicles that famous people have owned through the decades. He started it with his wife, Margie, and it's owned and operated by the Peterson Automotive Museum Foundation because I believe they both are deceased. The design of his building is very unique. As I recall, it was once a department store and it's windowless. And he did that to allow the cars to be in there, and or the vehicles, I should say, to be displayed without harmful effects of uh, exposure to the direct sunlight. And a little bit of security, I would guess. No doubt. Most of you might know him from Hot Rod Magazine, which was started in 1948 with $400 in cash and credit from a friendly printer. What's interesting about that is that many businesses... Uh, one that comes to mind right now is Pizza Hut. It's generally just started by a couple or a couple of friends, and sometimes they borrow money to start them, and they become a very successful operation, as was Peterson with his Hot Rod magazine. Are you talking about the American Dream? The American Dream. The first issue of the magazine, which ran about 5,000 copies, was released to coincide with L.A.'s Hot Rod exhibition. Well, that was smart timing. It was excellent timing. After the successful debut, the magazine continued to sell out and grow in readership. From here, Peterson built his publishing empire, Peterson Publishing Company, an automotive-themed publication, including car craft, rod and custom, sports car graphic, motor trend, cartoons, sport, motorcyclist, motor life, hunting, mountain biker, photographic, teen, tiger beat, sassy magazine, four-wheel and off-road. Ooh, I would like that one. Yeah. Circle track, off-road, skin diving, and snowboarder. Wow, he covered all the gambits of fun things to do, didn't he? In 1996, Peterson sold his company to a private equity fund for $450 million, which in 99 sold it for $2 billion. I say there's some value there, huh? I would say so. What's interesting is someone took a $400 investment and made it into a multi-million dollar project. That is fabulous. But back to this designed building. The Peterson Automotive Museum is a 300,000 square foot building on Wilshire Boulevard. It's the Miracle Mile, and this was designed as California's first shopping district designed with cars in mind, so it only made sense that Peterson built his museum on Wilshire Boulevard. Wilshire Boulevard is where the La Brea Tar Pits are located. More than 200 cars, among them a Model T, a 1938 Bugatti, Elvis Presley's 1971 Pantera, and several recent vintage vehicles that run on cooking oil. They fill the museum halls. I remember they even had Back to the Future's DeLorean. Oh, yeah, they had Doc's car. That was one of my favorites for and, sure. And they had a DeLorean that is gold. And what's interesting about that is they take all the cars up on the roof once a year and run them. And they just drive them around in a circle, keep all the fluids flowing and the uh, wheel bearings going and doing everything that they're supposed to. But the gold-plated DeLorean has never been started. And they take it up there, but they push it just so the wheel bearings stay good. I think the story goes that a, like a boy 14 or 15 won the raffle for that DeLorean and he couldn't drive, so he didn't start it, and then he just kept it that way. That's amazing, isn't it? Yes. It's a truly a great place. It really is. Uh, you do have to pay depending on what you see, and one of the great places that they have that I do encourage you to do pay extra for is to go into the vault. Now, you cannot take pictures in the vault, and I do know that they rotate cars. Some that are in the vault will be upstairs sometimes, and they just they mix them around. So it's a different viewing and showing every time you go. This makes the Peterson a place that you can return to and see something different, especially if you don't pay extra to go to the vault. But as I mentioned, I do encourage you to do that. 
Absolutely. They also have one of Mel DeMarcos' cars. Oh, okay, I've got a car from all kinds of, of fun people and exciting people, and it's a great place. Not to mention the movie Cars. they got Lightning McQueen. The Lightning McQueen, not just a replica. That's true. These are the actual cars. Yeah, all of them are. As you look at these cars, the one thing that you notice and is so critical to all of them is design. An engineer put it on paper and then it had to go into practicality and work. You can't have things flying off and falling off and that has happened on occasions sort of like the the Pinto. Ford had problems with the Pinto and their gas tanks. If they're not designed properly, it's a problem. It's a problem and it doesn't keep going. It isn't all about aesthetics and looks. The practicality and functionality and the design is super important. It doesn't get better on its own, does it? No, but they can be maintained like you see here, but most people don't take this kind of spit shine care of their vehicles. We've talked all about this, but what is your point, Steve? What is your point today? The old um, expression, evolution's like a tornado going through a junkyard and producing an awesome vehicle. Well, yeah, simply, I've always heard it as a 747 come out. Yeah, or 747 come out. Some kind of something with incredible design care, specifically built out of chaos. Well, they say everything started with chaos. There was a big bang and everything exploded and or something exploded and everything slowly formed after that. You never get order out of chaos like that. It doesn't happen. No, everything is by design. And even these tornadoes and these uh, videos that we're showing, they are creating chaos. As far as weather, it is designed by God. God created weather after the flood is when we got the seasons. And these weather patterns and these events, hurricanes, storms, they're all part of the water cycle. And bad things do happen like tornadoes because it creates chaos and problems. And blizzards and storms. The storm itself. Look at the shape of these tornadoes. The funnel, it's all, I imagine, a perfect mathematical equation in that funnel. And the water and the weight, there's a lot of uh, meteorological mathematics involved in that. But it does create chaos. And that's why we wanted to make a point that these cars are beautifully designed with intelligence and care. And when we look out in our world, we see the exact same thing. Yeah, they say evolution started with a simple life form of some sort. They don't really know how or what it was, but it was a simple life form. Everything came up from that portion. And some will say, well, not everything is related to each other and everything came from each other. It all started from the single first cell. And that's true, what they say, but that's even worse. You can't have something come out of something so simple. There's just no way, no proof, no science, no evidence for anything that they teach. It is, by definition, a religion. It is a set of beliefs about the cause, nature, and purpose of the universe. That is exactly what evolution is. People believe that it's true, but they cannot call it science because you can't do it, you can't watch it, you can't repeat it, you can't do anything of the sort to call it science. There is a huge difference between some simple single cell something that showed up and a giraffe. There just is no way a giraffe could have come from anything that came from something like that, much less just grass or trees or God made the sun, moon, and stars. He, he made everything, but notice flowers, the intricate beauty. These have a mathematical shape and design. They're symmetrical, not only gorgeous, but an engineering marvel by the great creator. Speaking of a marvel, what about a bumblebee? What about a bumblebee? Are they not beautiful or what? According to evolution, they shouldn't be able to fly. No, aren't they too fat for their wings? That's what they say, but I think God knew better. Well, this is one thing that gets me is in Genesis 126, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. That statement alone, if you're a Bible believer, rules out any evolution at all and specifically to mankind because if god made man in his image which man if it went through this evolutionary thing from a primate that that makes no sense so you either have to believe one or the other you can't compromise just think about our bodies our eyes are amazing what they can do and the cells in there and how they function is just absolutely amazing what about the brain and the nerves the blood vessels and the arteries and the nerves and 
everything. With the the brain tumor I was I'm just getting over and coming out of, it is amazing how much more we learned about the body and the nerves and, and what they can do and how they're made and how intricate they are. But think about the digestive system and it's not just you eat food and it goes in your belly and then it's done. It comes out. No, there is an amazing uh, pathway that that food goes in order to get the nutrition out of it and send the waste out. The process is obviously designed just like a car. There are so many different kinds of hoses. The hoses and belts and... Yes, it's, it's sort of similar in a way. Not to mention the gas going in the system. Right, we've got gas lines, well, the fuel lines, oil lines, hydraulic lines, the hoses that the water and the antifreeze go through, the radiator, the engine itself, it all shows design. And people can look at that and go, oh, obviously, you know, Ford designed that truck. Somebody had a brilliant idea. Yeah, an engineer. And then they look at grass or a giraffe and think, oh, that just happened by chance. I don't think so. No. In fact, when God made everything, at the end of day six, he said everything was very good. If God says something is very good, it's very good. But many of us know that Psalm 139, 14 says, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And that is an amazing statement because it is so true. There are no words to describe exactly how awesome these things we call a body happen to be. I hope you've enjoyed our interesting video today on the Peterson Automotive Museum, showing you some of these really cool cars that were obviously a product of design. And there's so many more. Right. We just showed you a smattering. We want you to realize that you are also designed by a beautiful, perfect engineer, and his name is Jesus. Thank you.